Next, I'd like to show you an advanced method for picking color called Color Gamut Masking. While there isn't a gamut masking feature built into Rebel, you can use the tool I created which can be imported. I'll open the Color Gamut Masking template and look in the Layers panel for the various types of masks. I'll select the complementary mode by making it visible. Next, I will choose the HSY color mode by making it visible. This is somewhat similar to HSLUV. If I want to select different hues, I can press T to transform the layer mask, then rotate it from the center. Do not scale or move these masks. Next, crop off any excess space using the Crop tool with Image Size disabled. Then Save As to save this image as a PNG. I'll return to the document I was painting in and load that PNG using the Reference Images panel. I'll click on the complementary gamut mask to show it in a panel. Then I can close the Reference Images panel and focus only on the gamut mask. You may want to dock it or place it near your color picker. I'll set the color picker to square and choose HSLUV with the hue strip. You'll want to match the gamut mask color mode to the color picker mode selected in Rebel. The grids I will use are 9x9 nine nine and 36. Try your best to conserve space by making the panel slimmer. If I select the Pick Color tool on the Reference Image panel, I can select any of the colors in the gamut mask and then use the color picker to fine tune them. The basic rules for gamut masking are simple. You can change the value of a color, but not the hue or saturation unless they fall within the range of your gamut mask. So if I sample the third yellow color down from the tip of the gamut mask, I can make it lighter or darker by moving up or down on the grid. I can also make it more or less saturated, but only as long as it doesn't go outside the range of my mask. To give you an example, I'll select the red hue on the left. I can desaturate it, but I cannot add saturation. In this case, the grid is too large to choose another increment, so this may be a reason not to use the grid. Without the grid, you can use the slider to select very fine increments. As you can see, a lot of color range is excluded and could be quite necessary to include in your painting. There are several workarounds for this. The first would be to modify saturation using the swatches and the gamut mask. Even though the grid doesn't show the correct color, you can see it accurately displayed in the primary color swatch. You can adjust the saturation in finer increments. Holding X and clicking on the gray area in the center of the gamut mask or in the color picker will desaturate a color. To resaturate it, hold X and click on the original color. We'll learn more about mixing color later in this lesson. The second method would be to click on the primary color swatch to override the grid and choose any value you want. There are arrows you can use to move the value one point at a time. The third method would be to use brushes to add value or saturation as colors mix together on the canvas. In regards to changing the hue, it would be best to use the increments in the gamut mask since it makes it easy to see which hues are off limits. I can choose any hue that is present in the mask, but not anything outside of it. You can of course break the rules and stray slightly outside of the mask and that's fine. You can even add colors to your composition that are not inside the gamut mask. This is just a tool to use as needed when you want your colors to be more harmonious, creative, or consistent. I have a few other videos that go more in depth about how to use color gamut masking, so check those out if you're interested.